Hey everybody, it's Ryan Bridge, and I want to welcome you to the 2021 Summer Reading Program Series. And look, man, we're doing Tales and Tales. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Bridge. People call me the Bug Man, and the reason they call me the Bug Man, I'm at schools and churches and libraries and birthday parties, all kinds of cool places. And what I do, I go out and I teach people about bugs and insects and cool creepy stuff man this is what i do for a living and today we are bringing you a ton of cool bug fun so hang on because i got a ton of stuff to do and i got a little bit of time to get it done now this year we are talking about tails and tails and yeah we're going to talk about tails on insects and we're also going to talk about a few tales about insects uh, more probably wise tales than actual tales. But either way, man, we're going to get it done, and it's going to be cool. So, look, there are more insects on the planet than any other living thing. So, look, man, insects are the most important component in the ecosystem. Everything relies on insects. Every fish, bird, plant, animal, every person no matter how much you want to hate insects, you need insects to survive. The planet needs insects to survive. And without insects, planet Earth would die. That is a fact. That is how important these cool things are. So check it out, man. Insects are coming in all shapes, all sizes, all colors. Everywhere you go on the planet, you're going to find insects. And some of those insects might even have tails. Now look, when it comes to tails and insects, things can get pretty confusing because no matter how you look at it, tails are gonna be parts and everything about insects has to do with having the right parts. To be an insect, you gotta have the right parts, right? So let's meet the Madagascar hissing cockroach because cockroaches are a great example of what is a typical everyday kind of insect. You have to have the right parts. The other thing is cockroaches make a great example of th you know something that people love to hate about insects. Keep something in mind here. This is real simple. Cockroaches are totally harmless. Cockroaches do not bite. They do not sting. They do not hurt anybody. They're not wet or slimy or gross or disgusting. When you hear people telling you to hate cockroaches because they're all these bad and horrible things, keep in mind, they're none of those things. Cockroaches are just another insect trying to survive another day because that's what all the insects are really trying to do. They're just trying to live another day, man. So don't hate on cockroaches just because somebody tells you to. Cockroaches make a great example of an insect because they have the right parts. Okay, so the first thing you need to understand, insects have six legs. You gotta have six legs to be an insect, man. How many legs does a dog have? How many legs does a duck have? How many legs does a spider have? Eight. So ducks and dogs and spiders are not insects. You have to have six legs to be an insect. All insects have six legs. Insects also have three main body parts, not the little pieces, the big parts, three main body parts. They have a head, they have a thorax, and they have the big squishy part down here called an abdomen. And yes, I would venture to say a lot of people are going to confuse the abdomen with a tail. There is a big difference between an abdomen and a tail, all right? Think about that, big differences, okay? For all the right reasons. So we're gonna try and focus on tails and still focus on insects. And we'll try not to get too confusing or too technical because bugs can get really technical if we let them. I'm gonna keep it simple for everybody today because look, man, insects are way too cool to make them boring with all kinds of high-tech mumbo jumbo. Let's stick to the simple stuff. Six legs, three main body parts, head, thorax, abdomen, and all insects have antenna. Yeah, man. Look, insects don't have a nose, 
and they're going to use their antenna in order to smell with. So all insects have them. So in other words, to be an insect, you have to have six legs. You have to have three main body parts. And everybody has two antennas. Six, three, and two. That will get you to the insects. Pretty simple stuff. All right. Very cool. So now that you understand what is an insect, six, three, two. Let's meet somebody who is not an insect. This is Kevin. <laughs> Kevin is an Asian forest scorpion. Kevin is not an insect. Kevin has eight legs. Kevin's got dirty feet too. He was in here digging. Kevin has eight legs. Kevin has five main body parts. Kevin does not have antenna, but he does have big crab claw pinchers. Kevin has a long tail and a big stinger. But Kevin isn't biting me and isn't pinching me and isn't stinging me. And I'm just not dead. Look, man, the big scorpions like Kevin, the largest in the world coming out of Asia and Africa, they're totally harmless, not going to hurt anybody. They're just bugs trying to live another day. They're not insects, but they're definitely bugs trying to live another day. Kevin is very cool. He's eight and a half years old. He'll live to be about 15. And when he gets that big, he's probably going to be too big for me to play with. But you get the idea right now. He's perfect. And he even has a tail, which is pretty cool because that would be as close as we could get to a legitimate tail. At the same time, on the end of that tail, he parks a big old stinger. And when Kevin wants to eat, he's going to use his claws and he's going to use the stinger and he comes all the way up over and he stings his food just like that. Look at him push that out there. He's going to use that stinger to sting his food while he's holding on to it with those big scary pinchers. But you notice he's not hurting me, man. It's not his job to hurt me. It's not the job of bugs and insects to hurt people. So look, even when they're big and scary and crazy and angry and they look like it, they're really not out there to hurt you. If you grab a bee off a flower, what's that bee probably going to do? It's probably going to sting you. If you leave the bee alone, <clears throat> nothing is going to happen. Pretty simple stuff. Same thing with Kevin. If I took Kevin, as harmless as he is right now, if I took Kevin and I stuff him in my mouth, it would be a bad thing. He's going to sting me. He's going to pinch me. Either way, I'm going to get that, spit him out. He gets to live another day. And so do I. That is the cool part about bugs and insects. They're not on the planet to hurt us or bite us or do any of that kind of stuff. They're here to do jobs, to keep the planet healthy, to keep the environment safe, and to keep the animals fed, fat, and happy. That's really why they're here. But let's get back on track, man, because people love to believe that scorpions are all deadly. And the trick is that the big scorpions like Kevin are totally harmless, but that also means little scorpions will probably mess you up. So don't mess with the little scorpions. If you live anywhere down south, if you live anywhere out west, you're probably going to find scorpions. They don't like winter. We don't have to worry about scorpions here in Pennsylvania because guess what, man? We have winter. That keeps the fire ants, that keeps the Africanized killer bees away, that keeps scorpions out of our backyards, keeps a lot of those really nasty things that people really you know, probably should be afraid of out of our area, whereas these things are just amazing and totally harmless. And best of all, guess what, man? Check this out. Insects and bugs, they all use the UV spectrum. Ultraviolet light comes off the sun. We don't like it. You know, it's bad for people. It burns your retinas, gives you skin cancers and sunburns and horrible things. Not good for humans. But guess what, man? Bugs and insects love the UV spectrum. So does Kevin. Because when you put him under ultraviolet light, he's going to glow. How cool is Kevin now, man? He glows. That is totally cool. Just a big old glowing scorpion that's totally harmless. Eight and a half years old. He'll live to be 15. Never going to hurt you, but he's a great example of what is not an insect, but he's also a really good example of a tailed creature. So let's move on because I could spend all day long talking all about Kevin. 
So let me introduce you to one more. And I think you'll like her as well. Most people are getting pretty comfortable and they're getting pretty familiar with Penelope. Penelope is a rose-haired tarantula. Penelope is a spider. She's going to have eight legs. She's going to have two main body parts. Penelope is covered in soft, fuzzy fur. She feels like a kitten when you pet her. No kidding. No lie. And at the same time, check it. Penelope has fangs. She has fangs and venom, but you know what? She's not biting me, not stinging me, not hurting me. Just a tarantula. She's just a spider. So here's what you need to know. All right. First of all, spiders, tarantulas, they do not have tails, but there's lots of tails out there about them. Cause you know what? People love to hate spiders probably as much as they want to hate cockroaches, maybe even more. Matter of fact, and the bigger the spider is, the more they want to hate it. Understand something. Almost all the spiders that you encounter in Pennsylvania are totally harmless to you. Can't bite you, can't hurt you, even if they wanted. Even if they really wanted to, they probably can't. And even those that can bite you, their venom is not going to be built for you. So you don't have to worry about almost all those spiders. There might be a few, and I might even show you one of those here in a minute. But either way you look at it, tarantulas, don't occur here in Pennsylvania, but they do occur down south and out west, same place as a lot of the scorpions go. All over the world, you might find tarantulas, but there's no deadly tarantulas anywhere on the planet. They just don't hurt people. They don't do anything wrong. They're just an apex predator trying to survive another day. So they're keeping the bug population and the insect population down. They're going to go out and they're going to look for bugs and worms and lizards and fun little things like that. That's really all they're trying to do. The one thing they'll never do is hurt you. Penelope is 22 years old. 22, man. 22 years old. That's a, that's a crazy age for a spider. Female tarantulas can live to be 35 years old. That is as long as a horse. That is crazy, too. The male tarantulas, pay attention, gentlemen. Pay attention, guys. The male tarantulas, they only live seven or eight years. Seven or eight years is all they get. Do you know why? It's because they go out and they run around and they run themselves to death chasing after girls just like Penelope. That's what it's all about. They run themselves to death. They only live seven or eight years old. Penelope, on the other hand, 22 years old. She'll live to be 35 years old. And the one thing she'll never, ever do is bite you or hurt you because tarantulas just don't want to do that. I mean, just keep it in mind, keep it in perspective. That's not the job of bugs and insects to be out there hurting people. You pick a fight with pinchers and biters and stingers, you're probably going to lose. So you don't put scorpions in your mouth. You don't put tarantulas in your mouth. You don't put any spider in your mouth. And nothing bad is going to happen. That's just the way it works. Wasn't Penelope cool? Now look, man, I can sit and talk to you all day long about all these cool bugs and how harmless they are, but there are things out there, especially here in Pennsylvania, there are some things out there that can really hurt you. And I'm not talking about simple bees and wasps and ants and hornets. You know, those are things that common sense tells you they're going to get you. I'm talking about a spider in particular that everybody is familiar with, but very few people get to see. I'm talking about the black widow spider. And black widow spiders are super, super cool, man. They're also really, really common. This black widow spider was collected just in South, you know, Southern York County. And at the same time I collected her, I collected 26 more just like her out of the same yard. These things are really common. But look, let's not give black widows more credit than they're worth. They're not considered deadly. They're venomous. They're bad. They're venomous. So if they, they bite you, you better go to the hospital because if they don't, you could have some real big problems. You're going to go to the hospital. They're going to treat you with, you know, antivenom. They're going to act as if you got bitten by a venomous snake and they're going to give you antivenom and you're probably going to throw up for three or four days and then you're going to come home. That's kind of the protocol for black widow spiders. 
and very, very, very few people have ever died from Black Widows. But you know what? There's a tale about Black Widows that people love to believe that Black Widows are deadly. Well, now you know the truth. They're not deadly. They're not even considered deadly. They're just another spider. Look, she's thinking about going down there and getting that little cockroach. Hopefully she gets him and she gets a dinner out of it because she's probably hungry. Just another bug trying to survive another day. So let's get back on track. Six legs, three main body parts, two antenna, back with insects because that's why we're here today. All right, look, insects are the most numerous living thing on the planet, but of the insects, beetles are the most numerous. Therefore, beetles are the most numerous living thing on the planet. There are more beetles than there are fish. How crazy is that? That is a, that's an insane amount of bugs. Just like all the other insects, they're coming in all shapes, all sizes, all colors. Everywhere you go on the planet, you're going to find beetles. Beetles are going to do more jobs than all the other insects. I mean, check it out. The job of bugs and insects is to keep the food chain fat and happy. So nature provides enough insects for all of the birds and the fish and the plants and animals and the people to survive. But beetles, beetles come along with more jobs than just that. And the one job that beetles do best is pollination. So who else pollinates? Bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, a whole bunch of other critters out there are going to help pollinate flowers. But guess what, man? Beetles, beetles pollinate more flowers than anything else on the planet. Eight out of 10 flowers in your garden, eight out of 10 flowers out in your yard, eight out of 10 flowers at the park, eight out of 10 flowers all over the planet. 80% of the flowers globally are pollinated by beetles, not by bees. But we do this weird thing, man. We put bees on a weird pedestal and we act like they're the be all end all of it. And if bees don't pollinate flowers, the universe collapses. The planet dies, it's all doom and gloom. Do not buy into that, man. All right, look, there's a lot of beetles out there and they're doing some cool stuff. They're pollinating. They're cleaning up dead animals. They're even cleaning up animal poop. You know why? Because somebody's got to do it and I'm not going to do it. You're not going to do it. Beetles do that. That's what beetles do. That's why beetles are on the planet. They have those jobs. Hey, here's a tale about insects. Did you know that ladybugs aren't really bugs? They're actually lady beetles. Ladybugs are a beetle. And most importantly, not all ladybugs are ladies. Yeah, they got to have boys and girls. That's just how nature works. Bees, bees are not on the planet to pollinate flowers. Think about that. The job of bees, the number one job of bees on the planet is not to pollinate. Yes, there are bees out there that pollinate. There's no doubt about that. And those bees are very important. Let's not mistake it. Let's give them credit. Without those bees, we would probably suffer a little bit. It's good they pollinate. But so few bees actually pollinate as compared to 80% of the pollination being done by beetles that Bees and hornets and wasps and ants, they all fall into a whole other category. They're not all necessarily pollinators. The job of bees and wasps and ants and hornets, the number one job is to control the insect population. They go out and they pick up spiders and they get caterpillars and they get beetles and they get stink bugs and they get all these other cool things and they take them all back and they feed them to their kids. That's the job of bees and wasps and ants and hornets. And some of those bees and wasps and ants and hornets actually have tails. And their tails really aren't tails. Remember what I warned you about, you know, things are gonna get a little confusing between tails and abdomens and other parts. But check these out. These are some crazy cool wasps and hornet that have what look like tails. You've got the pigeon 
horn tail. It's even called a horn tail. And you've got the Ichneumon wasp. And then you've got the Pelicinid wasp down here. And look at that. There's three things going on here. You've got an abdomen on the Pelicinid wasp that is super, super long. And then you've got this tail thing sticking out the end of the Ichneumon wasp. And all that is, that's an ovipositor. That is for laying eggs. And the other one on the top, the horn tail. Well, there's two things going on there. You notice there are two tails. The one on the bottom is for laying eggs. That's the ovipositor. And the other one on top is for defense and stinging and parasitizing the prey. And what all three of these wasps are going to do. They're going to go in and they're going to go under tree bark and they deposit eggs using their tails and they deposit eggs under the bark into beetle larva. How neat is that? These guys are out there controlling the beetle population because there's so many beetles. Nature needs to have something out there to take care of them. So bees, wasps, ants, and hornets, not necessarily doing all the pollination, but they're certainly out there using various tails in order to control beetles. That's pretty neat. Now, although lots of bees are out there doing their thing and using their variety of tails to get it done, beetles rarely, if ever, have tails. They have an abdomen, and that's about as close as you're going to get to a beetle having a tail. So don't go looking for tails on beetles. Probably not going to happen, but there's plenty of tails about beetles that are out there. So look, if all these bugs and insects out there are totally harmless, that means they can't bite, can't hurt, can't sting. 97% of the bugs and insects, that includes spiders, that you encounter in Pennsylvania cannot hurt you. They're totally harmless. Can't bite you, sting you, hurt you. And they better have a plan, man, because birds and animals and predators are going to come along and eat them. So you know what the number one plan is for those harmless bugs that can't bite, sting, or hurt anybody? It's camouflage. Camouflage is the art of blending in with the environment. You have to blend in. You have to look like sticks and leaves and branches and twigs and bushes and if you blend in that means you're hiding from those predators so you hide from those predators and when you're really good at hiding from predators they're not going to eat you and you get to live another day and sometimes insects that are using camouflage are also going to have tails and in the case of the dead leaf butterfly check this out how absolutely cool is that butterfly? It uses the tail at the end of the wing to simulate and mimic a leaf stem, and that helps to get the whole look of a dead leaf butterfly. Now, keep in mind, when butterflies rest, they rest with the wings closed. So you're only going to see that one side. You're only going to see that one side right there and look how cool that is look how good that is check this out i'll show you another one you're gonna like this this is the other one that was in the box ready for this look at that how amazing is that it even looks like it has bacteria and blemishes and imperfections on the wings when in fact that is exactly how the butterfly is supposed to look. Look how symmetrical that is. It's the same on both sides because that's how it's supposed to look. It's going to look like a dead leaf. And that is camouflage. Camouflage is the number one way that insects survive. Not biting and stinging and hurting. They hide. And if you're really good at hiding, that means those predators can't see you. And now they can't eat you. You get to live another day. So look, man, you get it. Tails on things. Sometimes they're just tails. But check this out. Dragonflies 
have tails. But they don't really have tails, do they? No, they have abdomens. Dragonflies are some of the favorite insects of a lot of people. They're also some of the fastest insects on the planet. There's a dragonfly that was once clocked at 64 miles an hour. The military has used technology gained through the aerodynamics. That means dragonflies are so good and so fast in flight that our military actually used some of the similar you know, anatomy, the body, and the aerodynamics on actual aircraft in order to improve the performance of military aircraft straight from dragonflies. So a bug that can go 64 miles an hour better be built for it. And you know what? That abdomen is what it's all about. The abdomen is going to help them stabilize themselves. The abdomen of a dragonfly not only does all the parts that a normal abdomen of an insect is supposed to do, but in the case of dragonflies, it's going to help them to go faster. It's going to keep them balanced. It keeps their, their, their bodies level and it keeps them streamlined so they can zip through the air. They can make turn on a dime turns. They can do those hard, fast flight turns. Very, very cool insects indeed. And one of the best predators around for mosquitoes. So if you hate mosquitoes, which you probably should, you should really, really appreciate dragonflies because dragonflies specialize on mosquitoes. That's their number one diet. Pretty cool. All right. So you get it, man. Tails or maybe not tails. Who knows? Those are some cool insects. Now, dragonflies are considered an aquatic insect. And the nymph of a dragonfly is below the water using gills to breathe with until it pulls itself out of the water and emerges into the dragonfly. But lots and lots of other insects are going to stay below the water's surface and still breathe air. And they do that by using tails. But the tails really aren't tails. They're more of a snorkel. These are all aquatic insects that use snorkels. Watch how this happens. They're going to invert themselves facing down into the water, and they're now going to use their cool little tails, which are actually snorkels, in order to breathe air. So they look like tails, but they're really not. They're just cool aquatic bugs and insects that are out there using their tails as snorkels. Insects breathe through their abdomen. And if they can't have spiracles, like the cockroaches, and breathe straight air, they have to find a way to get the air they need. And... How neat is it that some insects come equipped with gills and with snorkels attached to their abdomens in order to breathe air and stay alive one more day? Pretty cool stuff. Butterflies can also have tails. And there's been a lot of tales about butterflies as well. We'll talk about one of those shortly too. But look, let me get into this because this is cool stuff, man. Butterflies in Pennsylvania are very common, but as we bulldoze more of their habitat out, they're becoming less common. As we kill their habitat and remove places for butterflies to live, we're starting to see less butterflies. The butterflies are still there, they just tend to get pushed further away from us. So if you're beginning to wonder why you see less butterflies, start to look around and understand the more businesses, the more industrial parks, the more Walmarts, the more places where they're bulldozing acres and acres of farmland and meadows and fields and flowers and food plant out of the way, the less places for butterflies to go they're going to be. But butterflies in Pennsylvania can be pretty cool and numerous. We've got about 50 butterflies that live in Pennsylvania. Probably a few extras, but they float around. They fluctuate a little bit. 
We've got a lot of cool butterflies living in Pennsylvania, but check it out, man. I want you to notice there are tails on a lot of our butterflies. Look at all this. Those are called the swallowtail butterflies, and they have tails. Now, those tails have a lot of purposes, but the majority of that purpose is to confuse predators. Because if you can confuse predators, that means they're going to take a little extra time when they're going to hunt you down and eat you. So that extra couple minutes you might have, that might keep you alive. Check this one out. This is a hair streak butterfly. And look at those tails. That is pretty cool. It's a hair streak butterfly. Tiny little tails on there. And there's purposes for that. Here's another one. Has little tails. That's the great purple hair streak right there. And you can see that it has little tails. So why would it have those? Well, that's pretty, pretty simple. But not so much because you know what? It wants to confuse predators. Hair streak butterflies are going to use their hind wings. They're going to move their hind wings. They're going to create those tails. And they're going to make those tails wiggle just like this. And when they do it, that looks like antenna. And if the predators are going to take a shot at them, predators always aim for the head. So if you look close, it even looks like there's eye spots near those tails. So it looks like the head of the butterfly is on the wrong end, and that's the end that the predators are going to go after. And in doing so, they're probably going to get a big old mouthful of wing. Nature is sneaky like that, man. Even the tiny little butterflies trying to find ways to survive another day. Again, man, we got about 50 or so butterflies living in Pennsylvania, and lots of them are going to have tails. I love the swallowtails. Look how long the tails are on that zebra swallowtail. That is enough to confuse any predator, no matter what you're doing. But look, there are tales about butterflies and moths that involve the color, because everything is about color. Butterflies can't bite you, so they're going to use their color to survive another day. In the case of some, they're going to use their tails to survive. But colors are pretty important because it's all still geared around staying alive another day. And you know what, man? Simple, simple stuff. Color is where it's all at. And nature knows that girls love blues and purples and iridescent greens. And gentlemen, these are all males. They're all boys. And they show off the colors. And the ladies come running. And guess what, gentlemen? This is how you get girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, man. Nature knows. Nature understands that girls like these colors, so lots of insects are going to use them. But remember, it's all in nature, not just insects, all of nature. So birds and fish and reptiles also use the blues and purples and iridescent greens. That's kind of neat. Now, let me get you into a tale about these blue morpho butterflies. They're called blue morpho butterflies because they morph the blues and the purples and sometimes the iridescent greens and all those different ways. Makes them beautiful. But the real tale about this is these are not blue butterflies. They're not blue. They're white. Look, Color on butterflies and moths are all about scales. And those scales, not much different than snake scales or reptile scales. They're just layered scales. In the case of you know butterflies and moths and insects, they're modified hairs. It's going to get real technical. I don't want to go there with you. So you understand, the scales are more like roof shingles. And they're waterproofing. And they allow, sheet, they allow the, the water to sheet away. And they also thicken the wings, so that when a butterfly flaps the wings, the wings don't tear apart. So the scales on the wings are doing a couple different things. They're providing color. They're providing thickness. They're providing, you know, weatherproofing, waterproofing, and it all works really well for the butterfly. There are millions 
and millions of scales on butterfly wings. <clears throat> and in case of the blue morpho butterflies, each individual scale provides the individual colors you're seeing there. So you've got blues and purples, iridescent greens mixed onto all these butterflies. But the reality is with the blue morpho butterflies, the scales are more of a spectrum. Each scale is a spectrum laying on top of a white butterfly. So as the light hits it, that light is refracted and twisted and turned and creates all those cool blues and purples and iridescent greens that girls like so much. And nature uses those colors to attract mates. That's what it is. So even when you're not a blue butterfly, you can still look like one. So obviously butterflies cannot bite you and neither can moths. Look, your backyards are gonna go absolutely crazy at nighttime. Way more so than you realize. Just like you have butterflies flying during the day, you're gonna have moths fly at night. And if you put up big bright lights, moths are gonna come into those lights. And most people, they don't get it. They don't realize how common these things are. Check this out, man. You have the ability to put up lights right in the backyard where you live, all up and down the East Coast, but especially in Pennsylvania. We've got a great place where we live here in Pennsylvania. The whole state is loaded with cool moths. You have all this cool stuff living right in your backyards. And moths are gonna fly at nighttime. Almost all the moths fly at night. And a lot of the same things going on in the daytime bugs are happening in the nighttime bugs. Check it, man. You've got camouflage and you've got fake eyeballs. I mean, fake eyeballs, what a cool way to stay alive. Think about this. If you go to dinner tonight and you get a plate full of food and you look down at your plate full of food and there's a set of eyeballs staring back at you, are you going to eat that? No way, man. You're going to leave it alone. And that means this insect would get to live another day. How cool is that? Another thing about moths, moths are going to fly at night. Well, there's something that comes out and flies around at nighttime that tries to eat moths. It also eats mosquitoes, but they really like a big moth now and then too. What do you think that is? What do you think comes out at nighttime, flies around, and tries to eat moths? Bats. Bats like mosquitoes too. Bats are right up there with dragonflies as a top consumer. They eat more mosquitoes than everything else. But at the same time, they really like a big old moth now and then to eat. But there are some moths out there that are going to deny the bats a meal. And they do that with tails. This is a Luna moth. Check this out. And it has these cool tails that stick down. So when this Luna moth is flying around at nighttime and a bat comes in and tries to eat the Luna moth, what do you think those tails are going to do? What do you think the tails are going to do to that? They're going to hit it and smack it and confuse it. That bat isn't going to know what's going on. He's going to be getting beat up in the dark. All he's trying to do is get something to eat. And this moth is beating him up with those tails. He might even get lucky. He's going to grab one of those tails and he's going to break it away and fly away. And you know what? If you tear off the parts of insects, they don't grow back. I tell people that all the time. Don't pull their parts off. We wouldn't like it if people pull our parts off. Well, let's not pull their parts off. Because if you do that, they don't grow back. And this tail would be gone. The bat would fly away. And eventually he's going to realize he didn't get a meal. He just got a big old mouthful of wing. But the moth gets to live another day. The moth can afford to lose those tails because that's what they're designed to do. They're designed to protect it from bats. And check it, man. Nature doesn't mess around. Nature understands that bats are out there and the world is against them. 
So there's all kinds of moths all over the world using tails. Because if your job is to fly around, find a mate, and reproduce and feed the food chain, keep all those predators fat and happy, you have a plan. And if you can't bite or sting, well, then you probably are going to want to use tails. And most of these cool big moths out there flying around are going to have some type of defense and tails. Check those out. Look how long those tails are, man. Gives you an idea. I mean, look, that's my hand. They're as long as my hand. That's super cool. And these moths are going to fly around in South America in the rainforest, and they're going to protect themselves with their tails. And no, they can't sting or hurt anybody, but the bats aren't going to get an easy meal out of that. And it happens all over the world all the time. Check it out, man. These are more Luna Moths. We have our Luna Moth here in the United States. This is what the rest of the world has to offer for Luna Moths. You've got Malaysia. You've got Africa. All kinds of places are going to use big moths with big long tails to try and stay alive one more day. And they come in all shapes, all sizes, all colors, all the same. Super, super neat stuff. Tails. Who knew? Who knew moths would need tails to stay alive another day? And it doesn't end there. It keeps on going, man. The largest moths in the world even use tails. These are Hercules moths. And these Hercules moths are as big as it gets. This is the largest moth species in the world. And look what the males, that's the female and that's the males. You know what? The males generally go up and fly around. The females are going to hang around. Sometimes they don't even leave the cocoon. They hang off the cocoon. They put out a pheromone. That's sort of like a perfume. Wafts into the air. And the male moths, they pick that smell up. And they follow that smell up the, you know, up the wind. And they follow it right to the female. And then they can reproduce. But they use their tails in order to protect themselves from the bats. And that is how you stay alive another day. Largest moths in the world using tails in Malaysia. How cool is that? Look, man, when you're really, really big, less bullies pick on you. And right here in Pennsylvania, we have the largest moth in North America. This is a Cecropia moth. And if you put up bright lights, this is the kind of stuff that's going to come in, man. It's a Cecropia moth. How beautiful is she? Look, she's loaded with eggs. She comes in to lights at nighttime, and then she'll float away at some point and go find some food plant and lay eggs. But these moths are flying around your backyards every night all summer long. Largest moths in the world using tails, largest moths in North America, right here in Pennsylvania. Nature. What is there not to love about that, man? Look, there's other moths that are flying right now, too. I'm trying to encourage you to put up lights at night because this is the cool stuff that's going to come into those lights. Remember we talked about the fake eyeballs? This is a polyphemus moth. These things are common. They're flying really good right now. And they use those fake eyeballs. They're out of this. I just. <laughs> they use fake eyeballs to stay alive another day. The predators are going to see those eyes. They're going to leave this moth alone. And this moth gets to live one more day. That is nature. That's the job. That's all they're trying to do. Give them that chance, man. Let them impress you because they're cool like that. But really big insects occur all over the world. 
And keep in mind, just like big scorpions versus little scorpions, it's generally the little bugs, the little spiders, the little scorpions that are out there hurting people. Black widow spiders, little scorpions, little bees, little wasps. Those are the ones that usually pack a big punch. Because if everybody's trying to eat you, you better have a plan. And big aggression, big venom, big way to stay alive another day. That's the plan. But the really big, scary, crazy big insects, those are almost always harmless. Because when you're really big, nobody's going to mess with you. Especially if you're a big scorpion or a big tarantula or big beetles or big moths. They're just not out there getting tore up like the smaller bugs are probably going to. And look, man, largest in the world makes big sense. When you can be some of the largest insects in the world, you're going to survive another day. Largest Katie did in the world. Largest beetles in the world. Craziest walking sticks in the world. Just cool, big, crazy bugs. And they're all totally harmless. Never going to bite you. Never going to sting you. And Hollywood, the movies, they don't want you to know that. They want you to believe that big scorpions and big tarantulas and big cockroaches and big beetles and big walking sticks, they want you to believe all this stuff is going to hurt you and bite you and sting you because that's what Hollywood does. It puts on a show for everybody. Don't buy in. Big insects, totally harmless, man. Not going to hurt anybody. Go to Africa. Yeah, that's a weird statement to hear because you're not going to hear that from everybody, but you're going to hear it from me. I personally think everybody should go to Africa at least once. And then after you go the one time, you're going to go again. But I really sincerely from my heart, I mean that. Everybody should go to Africa. I go for the insects, obviously. But other people are going to go for the animals. And look, you're going to see some really big animals when you get there. You're going to see elephants. You're going to see some of the big you know, the giraffe, and you're going to see the buffalo, water buffalo. You're going to see some humongous animals when you go there, some of the largest in the world. You're also going to catch up with some of the largest insects in the world, and that would be the largest walking sticks in the world. How awesome is that? It's a walking stick. Do walking sticks bite you? No, walking sticks don't bite you. They eat leaves, but check this walking stick out, man. You've got size, you've got camouflage, and what else? Ah, you've got wings. Wings on a walking stick. That means this walking stick can get to better food plant. This walking stick can most of all get away from predators. But everything about the big harmless insect is about staying alive one more day. Because that's what nature does. Super cool stuff, man. That's what it is. Look, it's all about color. I want to introduce you to one more before we go because I'm running out of time. This is Elliot. Yeah, everybody say, hi, Elliot. Yeah, what is Elliot? Elliot is a grasshopper. Elliot is a Florida lover grasshopper. So guess where Elliot comes from? Yeah, he comes from Florida. So there you go. But he's the largest type of grasshopper in the United States, and check out those colors. You got yellow, you got red, you have orange, you got black, you got those combinations, and guess what, man? He's trying to tell you something. He's trying to tell you that he's poisonous. No, that doesn't mean he's gonna bite you. That's venomous. If a snake bites you and hurts you, that's probably venomous. Grasshoppers don't bite. Grasshoppers don't do that. So you don't have to worry about grasshoppers, but what do grasshoppers do? They hop. Well, you notice he's not even doing that. Elliot is a pretty lazy grasshopper. Not going to hurt anybody, but he's also not going to do much hopping. But those colors are the important thing. Because if he can't bite, can't sting, can't hurt, he better have a plan too. And his plan is to show you those colors and let you know that he is poisonous. Uh, again, not going to bite you. He's not a venomous snake, not a venomous insect. 
He's a poisonous insect. So if you eat Elliot, you're going to get really sick. Yeah. Think about the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly, orange and black. Orange and black tells the birds that that butterfly is going to make them sick. So guess what? They don't eat the butterfly. Butterfly gets to live another day. Elliot's doing exactly the same thing. He's just trying to show you that he's poisonous. He doesn't want to die teaching you a lesson. So he's trying to tell you up front that he's a big old poisonous grasshopper. And if you ate Elliot, he would make you sick. So do you want to eat Elliot now? No, of course not. Neither will the predators. They're going to recognize those colors. Elliot gets to live another day. That is nature. That's what it is is all about six legs, three main body parts, two antenna, 97% harmless to you everywhere you go in Pennsylvania, and still the most important component in the ecosystem. So look, tails versus tails. So I think you understand, sometimes tails just really aren't tails. Maybe they provide balance and aerodynamics. Maybe, maybe they provide protection from bats at nighttime. Maybe they even look like the head of an insect instead of the tail of an insect. Maybe they even act as snorkels. Or maybe they help it to look like a dead leaf. Insects find really cool creative ways to have tails. And even when they're not really tails, they still kind of look like it. Nature is cool like that. So I hope you get it, man. Look, six, three, two, six legs, three main body parts, two antenna. That's what makes an insect an insect. Do all insects have wings? No, absolutely not. Lots have them, lots don't have them. But you got to have the right parts to be an insect. And sometimes... They even have tails. Look, they're the most important component in the ecosystem. Everywhere you go on the planet, you're going to find insects. They're going to come in all shapes, all sizes, all colors. Everywhere you go, you're going to see them, and you're never, ever going to run out of insects because everything needs insects to survive every single day. All the birds, all the fish, all the plants all the animals, all the people. This planet needs insects. And without insects, it will die. So look, man, I want to thank you guys for the opportunity to come out. Look, I hope you had as much fun with this as I did because I love teaching people about bugs and insects. I use my YouTube channel for the same thing. So find me over there, like it, subscribe it, guys. I appreciate that. But most of all, please continue to support your local libraries because without folks like those, we wouldn't be talking today, would we? So go out there, support your local libraries. Thank you so much for all your support on both cases. And guys, be well, be safe. Let's all be kind. Take care, guys. Have a good one.